Today on Good Morning Maine, an eight-year-old boy is dead and others are fighting for their lives following a terrible crash in, Run in Rumford. Plus a big rally in Bangor where people are calling for an end to the war in Gaza. And a look at some of the flooding caused by the latest storm to batter the coast. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us. We'll have those stories coming up. Fortunately, the flooding wasn't nearly as bad as we had over those last couple of storms. Still but pretty bad, still though. Still pretty you bad. You saw video from the Machias Dyke. Yeah. You saw video from Trenton. You saw yeah. video from Bar Harbor, Buck Belfast. Still a lot of water covering roadways and right. docks, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, not a lot of destruction, but there's still some out there. And we'll have that coming up. Uh, but first, to check of our forecast, looks like we'll have a chance of a little more rain today, maybe even a little snow in some areas. I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. Happy Monday. Yeah, right. <laughs> Here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's Artist Trailer Dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, let's get into things this morning. Advisories are posted because of the wind, mainly, though. Wind advisories up until around 2 a.m. as we head towards your Tuesday for the counties highlighted there. And along the coast, also expiring at 2 p.m. No, we have gale warnings that are posted along the coast. Meanwhile, though, we do have some precipitation rotating around right now, too. We're in a little bit of a break for the time being, but a few rain and snow showers will be expected again throughout the daytime period as this area low pressure continues to rotate off towards the east. So here it is right about in here. We're kind of in the middle of this dry slot right about in here where some spots are seeing some rain and snow this morning and other areas will see a little bit as we head towards the afternoon hours as well. So we'll be watching for some more of this to develop during the afternoon period. Later on tonight, we'll start to lose it a bit, but tomorrow, though, a few flurries cannot be ruled out, at least in the east parts of the state, but the wind though, we're going to notice this. Some sustained winds getting up to around 20 miles per hour at times with gusts even up to 40 miles per hour, and this will also continue into the day on Tuesday. We'll have to watch out for that. So for today, a few rain and snow showers possible. Dry hours as well with highs in the low 40s and northwest wind getting up to about 40 miles per hour. By tonight, here we go. Mostly cloudy, a few snow showers possible. Lows in the upper 20s. The northwest wind st still gusting up to around 40 miles per hour. Already that early forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. Will be mostly cloudy with a few rain and snow showers possible. Temperatures in the 40s. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. All right, thank you, Devin. We'll see you then. An eight year old boy is dead, and his younger brother and father are fighting for their lives in the hospital after a head on crash in Rumford. Shortly after 3 p.m. on Saturday, police responded to the area of 1125 U.S. Route 2 for, for that crash. Runford police say a game warden and a nurse were nearby and ran up to the cars to help an unresponsive eight-year-old. He later died from his injuries. Three other people suffered life-threatening injuries as well, including the boy's father and five-year-old brother, who were both transported to the hospital. The fourth person in the crash was a Rumford man driving the other car involved. He also suffered life-threatening injuries. No charges have been announced at this point, but Rumford police say that alcohol does appear to be a factor. A Bridgeton man was arrested Saturday morning in connection with a November homicide. Officials say on November 25th of last year, Maine State Police and the Bridgeton Police Department investigated a suspicious death at a residence on the Pond Road in Bridgeton. The deceased was identified as 51-year-old Benita Preo, and their death was ruled a homicide. According to the Maine State Police, detectives investigated the case over the next three months and on Friday, an indictment charged 48-year-old Eric Knight of Bridgeton with depraved indifference murder. Police say Preo and Knight were in a relationship and lived together. Police say Knight was arrested without incident and is being held on a $500,000 cash bail at the Cumberland County Jail. Knight will be arraigned at the Cumberland County Superior Court on Monday. Well, members of the Bangor community came together Saturday night to mourn the death of Braxton Smith. The little boy recently passed away after police say he had been abused and murdered by his own family. Our Callie Warren has more. Braxton Smith's death last month was ruled a homicide, and his parents and grandmother have been charged with his murder. Saturday night, his young life was remembered with a candlelight vigil on the Bangor waterfront, where white balloons were released in the 10-year-old boy's honor. Attendees are advocating for child abuse awareness. 
We do need to be more attentive to what's going on around us. I personally have reported a neighbor at one time because right now I feel these children have nothing to protect them. The vigil's organizer, Matt McKean, says that as a victim of child abuse himself, the case hits close to home. In my opinion, there's absolutely no place on this earth for these people, for these kinds of acts and these people who do these things. It's, it's unspeakable. For Braxton's neighbors and surrounding community, the vigil was a way to grieve together. I feel like he deserved a lot more than how his parents treated him. I also think it's crazy that it happened so close to us and no one had any idea. I think that that's just so awful. Organizers say that they will continue to fight against child abuse in Maine. Dearest Braxton, you do not know us, but we would have been honored to have met you. In Bangor, Callie Warren, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. To report a suspected child abuse or neglect, call the Office of the Child and Family Services at 1-800-452-1999. In other news now, firefighters were injured and a building was destroyed following a fire yesterday morning in Millinocket. Crews received reports of flames shooting out of a building on Penobscot Avenue downtown around 7.30 a.m. According to the members of the fire department, the building was not occupied. However, two firefighters did sustain minor injuries and were transported to a nearby hospital. Millinocket's fire chief declined to appear on camera, but says there was damage to some of the nearby shops and the town office. Locals say although the building has been unoccupied for years, it once served as a bank and has been part of the downtown area for decades. Now the historic building on Main Street that could have been renovated, you know, lost. We're very fortunate that it didn't burn the municipal building or the Katahdin Valley Health Center. You know, it's just a huge loss for downtown Millinocket once again. The area was closed off for several hours as crews worked to contain the fire. The building is a total loss. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Well, last weekend, over 1,000 protesters gathered in Portland demanding a ceasefire in Gaza. On Sunday, similar efforts were seen in Bangor as dozens rallied in downtown in what organizers say was their largest demonstration yet here in the area. Our Grace Blanchard has the story. Dozens rallied along Pierce Memorial Park in downtown Bangor on Sunday in the latest efforts from the Maine Coalition for Palestine. Well, we are here, out here today to rally in support of Palestine to demand an immediate ceasefire and immediate humanitarian relief for the people of Gaza and end to the ongoing genocide that is taking place. Organizers say despite the weather, this is their largest protest yet in the Bangor area, with more than 70 people seen waving their signs and flags. We have the ability to make the changes right here and now. Our government has the ability to stop this genocide if they wanted to, but they aren't, so we have to make them listen. Maine Representative Shelley Pingree is the only congressional leader in the state who has publicly called for a permanent bilateral ceasefire in Gaza. Many of the protesters say they have participated in rallies around the state and Washington, D.C. Um, I did go to D.C. a few months ago. That was great. Um, we've had a few other rallies here in Bangor, and this is not the last. You don't have to stay silent, even if it feels like there's not much you can do. You can call your senator. You can boycott. You can join the coalition. You can protest. There's, there's so many things you can do. Organizers say this is not the last of the Coalition for Palestine's efforts. We will continue to show up and we will continue to struggle until we see an end to this genocide and until we see liberation for Palestine. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, some people are still cleaning up after a storm system brought another round of flooding along the coast. It was the last thing anyone wanted following a winter that brought a number of damaging storms. In Tremont, video shared by the local fire department shows water blocking off a portion of the Lopez Point Road. Similar scenes could be spotted all along the coast of Maine. Meanwhile, in Bucksport, a photo shows waves covering up the waterfront. Take a look at some of the damage there. Water levels also rose here along with the unusually high tide on Sunday morning. There was some minor flooding along the waterfront, but no widespread damage is reported. A Sunday storm also hit storm weary areas along Maine's southern coast, including in Scarborough, where the sea moved into neighborhoods and swamped a number of homes. Asia Reed has more.
from Boston, but um, I just come up to check on it because the last two storms, I was just hoping like it didn't float down the road, you know? Michael Ruin made the trip up to Higgins Beach to make sure his summer house was okay. The house is undamaged, but the roads, not so much. Vesper Street in Scarborough looks like a river and is coated in sea foam. All hands on deck, big or small, to help cleaning up the roads and property after high tide Sunday. John Moore and his son Finn live along the beach here and are moving debris. Finn wanted to do his part to help clean things up, so getting out here, he has his own little wheelbarrow and shovel. Driveways in the area are flooded, and water reached all the way to front steps of several houses. Elizabeth Flaherty lives on this road and is in disbelief. It's just crazy. Never in all my lifetime have I seen this. Bayview Ave is right along the ocean here, and folks are out surveying the damage. Judy Hodgson being one of them. It's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this before. This storm took out a massive beam in chunks of the road, too. Waves crashing over the seawall and creeping up to homes. A little too close for comfort after the storms we saw earlier this year. We're still not repaired from what happened in January and December, so pretty, it's pretty rough. And the Castine Town dock was underwater once again, marking yet another storm to bring flooding to the area in recent months. Residents of Castine have been busy making repairs following the winter storms that tore out docks and caused a lot of destruction. The last thing they wanted to see is more flooding, but unfortunately the storm wasn't nearly, or excuse me, but fortunately the storm wasn't nearly as severe as the last. Looks like it just came up on uh, the tide rose above that, that parking lot where the town dock had already been wiped out. Right. Brought some more debris up there, but it's a matter of letting the water recede and they can pick it all up. Yeah. Flat. Very similar scenes in Belfast. Yeah. All over the place yesterday. I know, so, it's crazy. Yeah. It wasn't a full moon or anything. Yeah. I don't know why the tide was so high. I don't know. Okay, uh, the time now is 6.12. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, the Waterville Soup Kitchen needs help as it struggles to keep up with the growing demand for services. We'll have the story. But first, another check of that weather forecast. Today we can expect a little rain and snow. The highs will be near 42 degrees. Mostly cloudy overnight with a chance of snow. Lows in the upper 20s. Tomorrow things will clear out a little bit. Partly cloudy and windy for your Tuesday with highs near 45. So do you guys need a ride to the Oscars after party? Well, funny you should ask. Can I drive? Not a chance. Hi, Robin. Hi, Michael. Careful, Lara. It's Anchorman Kid. Oscars after party. Here we come. Good morning, America. Goose River Farm and Meat Store is conveniently located on Route 3 across from Hammond Lumber in Belfast. They have a wide selection of meat and poultry, including beef, pork, lamb, chicken, duck, rabbit, and turkey. Open Tuesday through Saturday. Bad boy mowers aren't built for everyone. They're built for the bold, the originals, the people who get the job done and love every second of it. Bad boys are built for horsepower and cutting edge precision with a first of its kind three link suspension and a style all their own. Because you're not everyone, and that's a good thing. Bad boy, mow with an attitude. Sign up for You Pick 'em Red Sox at foxbangor.com. Pick who you think is going to win and compete against other fans for prizes. Maine has the oldest population in the U.S., which means more people are aging in place. Some of the people we call, you know, they have family, but others don't. And so they really look forward to that human interaction. We'll tell you about Northern Lights Caring Calls program tonight on ABC7 News at 6. The man who would later become the Lewiston mass shooter suffered traumatic brain injuries from his years of experience conducting grenade training drills, and that could lead to changes in training protocols. Robert Card, an Army reservist, was exposed to thousands of low-level blasts during the years he helped train West Point cadets in firearms and grenade experience. That's according to a forensic analysis of Card's brain tissue conducted by Boston University. 
In a statement, the Army's Office of the Chief Public Affairs says, quote, the lab findings included in Card's autopsy report indicating brain injuries brain injury are concerning and underscore the Army's need to do all it can to protect soldiers against blast-induced injury. In the near future, the Army will begin an Army-wide blast overpressure safety campaign to increase understanding of potential risks, direct risk mitigation actions, require documentation of training environments that exceed 4 PSI, which is pounds per square inch, and require trafficking of exposed personnel. End quote. It's not known if or how Card's brain injury factored into the October 25th mass shooting. The Maine Women's Hall of Fame was established back in 1990 by UMaine Augusta's Maine Business and Professional Women and the Maine Futurama Foundation. It recognizes women who've made enduring contributions to society. But there was another prestigious award including in, included in Friday night ceremony, and our Doug Banks was there. I was really proud and honored. On International Women's Day, a crowd gathered inside the Buchanan Alumni Hall at the University of Maine to recognize four women who've broken barriers and built a better future for Maine people. Nancy Fritz is the former director of Homeless Initiatives and an advocate for domestic violence awareness. On Friday night, she and abortion rights activist Julia McDonald were inducted into the Maine Women's Hall of Fame. One of the things I think most about is the sense of community and that this award for me means a lot about a community that I've developed. Named after a former UMaine faculty member and pioneer, the Marianne Hartman Award recognizes achievements made by women in arts, community service, and more. For the first time in its nearly 40-year history, that award ceremony shared the stage with the Hall of Fame. We're bringing them together this year and then able to celebrate in one wonderful um, evening. President and CEO of Penquis, Cara Hay, was one of the Hartman Award recipients. To have a chance to be honored if someone who could stand among these incredible women is just Outstanding. And so was Northern Light Health's Associate Vice President of Diversity, Equality and Inclusion, Mara Hosnan. So significant, especially um, honoring women on International Women's Day. Um, and uh, you have representation of different kinds of women. And I think it's, it's really significant to me um, being a daughter of immigrants. This event honors the women of today and those who forced the path before them. I admire them. I'm so uh, appreciative of joining that group. Equally important, it also seeks to inspire the leaders of tomorrow. We see um, a range of ages right here in the group that's uh, together tonight to honor these women. And that's a signal that there will be many, many more people to follow who will do wonderful, amazing things. I'm really excited to show my daughters especially that if you work hard and if you really um, have the passion and have the heart to, to do what you love, then you know you will be recognized for it. In Orno, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A Waterville soup kitchen is in need of more funding to meet rising demands, not only for the food they serve, but also the resources they provide. David Ledford stopped by to learn more. The Waterville area soup kitchen has been serving the city for over two years. And in that time, more and more people have come through its doors for a warm meal and a sense of community. Thank you. But President Carla Karen says inflated prices and a surge in demand have made it more difficult to help everyone who stops by. The first day that we were here, we served 50 meals. As of last week, we've served over 80,000 meals since we've been in this space. In the cost of keeping the lights on, they doubled. The costs of food doubled and tripled in some cases. Karen says the kitchen is raising funds through community efforts, and the city recently voted to provide them with $50,000 in ARPA funding. But the council has to vote on the request again before a decision is officially made. Any time appropriation of money or is in order and it requires two votes, and it, it, it could they could choose to not approve it. I mean, anything could happen in, in any in the, over the next two weeks. Staff say the organization is much more than a soup kitchen. They also help to address a number of other community needs, and they say the demand for that kind of help is only going up. Maine Family Planning um, 
has procured a mobile health unit. We have also a paramedicine unit through Waterville Fire Department. Our answer to the unhoused population is to equip them through the resources that are coming here to meet them where they're at, where they're comfortable. View the story on our website to learn how you can help. In Waterville, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. An important resource to the community. Yeah. Yeah, that lasagna looked good too. <laughs> All right, the time now is 6.20 after the break. Folks with spring allergies may be feeling their effects early this year. We'll hear why. Plus, the Department of Justice is putting pressure on Boeing after their airplanes have had multiple dangerous mis mishaps these past few weeks. All the latest on those stories and more coming up on Good Morning Maine. Whether you can pinpoint the problem or can't quite put your finger on it, the friendly professionals from Coastal Auto Parts can help point you in the right direction. With Maine's largest network of parts, you can trust your vehicle will have what it needs to get you to the moments that matter most. Because Napa knows the keys to a winning team. And with 29 locations in Maine, Coastal Auto Parts helps keep our communities running. Team up together with the fuel that keeps us firing on all cylinders. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. Hi, I'm Barry Gass, and my grandfather started Gas Horse Supply in Western Wear right here in Orono in 1911. Just after World War II, my father ran the business for decades. Now, with my wife and wonderful staff, we are continuing the tradition of bringing the American West to Maine. Our authentic Western boots are handcrafted for comfort, style, work, and casual wear. Saddle up with our premium selection of top quality saddles. Top it off with the perfect hat from classic to modern ranch. Gas War Supply and Western Wear in Orono, where the American West comes alive in Maine. Dear Savvy Traveler, airline food isn't what it used to be. I need to fuel up before I fly. Dear Hangry, you can fill up before takeoff at Bangor International Airport. The Highlands Cafe has quick and casual. The Refueler Pub and Grill has heartier fare. And the Post Security Cafe, other side of TSA, offers a pick-me-up before wheels up. Bon appétit and bon voyage, Hangry. And remember, the savvy travel through Bangor International Airport. Flybangor.com. Welcome back everyone. Spring is just around the corner and if you have a spring allergy, it's better to get prepared right now. These tiny particles are surprisingly already in the air. Historically, the allergy season starts in late March and continues until June. But this winter, the U.S. and had higher temperatures and a lot of rainfall, which are making plants release pollen faster. Some tips are staying indoors, keeping your windows closed and running air conditioners, especially for those with eye allergies. Wearing sunglasses could also help. Medical officials suggest taking a shower as it also helps to get, the rid, uh, get rid of that pollen that is collected on your body. And this is definitely advice from some other places in the Northeast that are a little bit more south than we are because yeah. it's more severe there. But I've noticed I've had to start taking my allergy pill in yeah. the past week and a half. So it's around here that as well. That time of year, spring starts in like a little over a week or something like Way that. Way earlier yeah. than usual right yeah. now though. And I think all that, like you said, all that rain yeah. is exacerbating it. I hear a lot of ticks are out right now too. Yeah, that so too. people reporting that. So yeah, be careful. Watch out for ticks. Yep. So. All right, time now is 623. Looks like kind of a gray day again today. Let's check in with Devin for your forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All righty, this morning, here's what we're looking at here. A wind advisory is posted in some areas here where you see that it's highlighted until about 2 a.m. as we head towards a Tuesday because of gusty winds that will be expected. Even the areas not under any advisories or under or are going to be dealing with some of these winds coming up as well. Well, gale warnings also posted until 2 p.m. on Tuesday along the coast because of active surf that we will be dealing with and will continue to deal with as well. You can see 7 to 12 foot wave heights already being observed this morning though with even higher surf farther down to the south where the green colors are being noticed. So again, it's going to be very active out there at least for the next little while with this area low pressure passing through. We're in a little bit of a dry stretch right now. We had a few rain and snow showers last night. Maybe a few flurries are being noted in a few spots this morning. But we will be watching for a few more 
of rain and snow showers that will be possible coming up soon with this area low pressure that will be tracking off towards the north and east. But once we get this through, though, we will calm down for a bit because who knows what's going on across the good part of the country. A whole lot of nothing right now, so things will start to calm down as we do move forward in time. But we do have more precipitation chances later on this week to keep an eye on. So futurecast moving forward, though, a few rain and snow showers cannot be ruled out across the region today. Later on tonight, we'll start to lose that in coverage. And then tomorrow, for the most part, we're dry, except for the eastern parts of the state. A few flurries cannot be ruled out from the system before we're all finished up, though. But by the time we head towards Tuesday night, things will begin to improve. There's some clouds left over, but still a little breezy nonetheless. And we do not have to worry about much in the way of snowfall accumulations. A few localized areas can see a little bit of snow, but otherwise, so not looking too bad there. As for the rainfall, though, again, maybe a little bit, though, maybe up to a quarter of an inch in the eastern parts of the state with lesser opportunities further off towards the west when it comes to the rainfall units. As for the gusty winds, that's also the big story, though. Some gusty winds today reaching up to around 40 miles per hour. That continues in it tonight and sticking around as we head towards the daytime tomorrow as well. Our average high temperature of 38 degrees. We'll do lower 40s today, middle 40s Tuesday, lower 50s Wednesday, upper 40s Thursday. We're back in the low 50s Friday and 40s return again Saturday and also in your Sunday. For today, here we go. Lower 40s, a few rain and snow showers possible. Windy out there with a northwest wind gusty up to around 40 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, mostly cloudy. A few leftover snow showers could stick around with lows in the upper 20s with a northwest wind gusty up to around 40 miles per hour. And for the most part, we're dry tomorrow. Partly cloudy and windy. Maybe a few flurries in the eastern parts of the state. Highs in the mid 40s at northwest wind getting up to about 40 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation extended forecast. Partly cloudy on Wednesday with highs in the low 50s. Upper 40s Thursday with a few rain showers possible. Mostly cloudy Friday with highs in the low 50s. People ask me all the time, are those commercials really true? Does Lowry & Associates really get all of those clients, all of those big settlements? Yes, we do. We really have gotten millions of dollars for Mainers hurt by commercial vehicles. And the insurance companies know when you call the twos, we're going to fight for you. And you know what else is true? I really am standing on top of this big truck. Hurt by a big truck? Call the twos. We win for you. Save big on new floors with Empire Today's buy one, get two free sale. Buy floors for one room and get carpet, hardwood, vinyl, and laminate for two more rooms free when you pay for padding and installation. Empire makes flooring easy. See samples in your home, get a free estimate during your appointment, and your floors will be professionally installed. Don't miss Empire's buy one, get two free sale. Schedule now. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. With remote access from Katahdin Federal Credit Union, you can manage your money from anywhere. Don't let banking get in the way of living. Remote access from Katahdin Federal Credit Union. The best value for your money is always at the Furniture Gallery. Strike gold on value and comfort with recliners starting at $298 and power recliners starting at $398. Feel like a lucky charm with deals on this reclining sofa for $598 or on this sofa chaise also $598. Find unbeatable savings at the Furniture Gallery on top brands like Serta, Restonic, Parker House, Ashley, Flex Steel, and more. Markdown Madness is happening now, so hurry in and save big. The Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and North Wyndham. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Explosions go off in Gaza on Monday in the midst of airdrop aid activity. A dark cloud of smoke could be seen from southern Israel looking into Gaza. The smoke came amid the sounds of explosions. Aid parcels were also seen being dropped into the area. It's not clear which countries are carrying out airdrops of aid, nor what the source of the explosions were. But on Sunday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said a military operation in, Raha, in Rafah will be inevitable and will last for several weeks. A six-week ceasefire agreement proposed by mediators was not agreed to by Hamas last week. All of this comes as the holy month of Ramadan started on Sunday. 
Well, on Sunday, protesters against the war in Gaza shut down a major traffic artery in Hollywood, about a mile from the Dolby Theater where the Academy Awards were being held. The demonstrators gathered on Sunset Boulevard holding signs that read, while you're watching, bombs are dropping, and eyes on Rafah, a city in southern Gaza where more than a million displaced Palestinians have taken refuge. Protesters blocked the area as award ceremony attendees sat in black SUVs that were at a standstill for more than an hour until the police cleared the area. Demonstrators shouted, shame on you, at some of the people walking into the ceremony. Police in helmets and wielding batons declared an unlawful assembly and threatened arrest. The activist groups, including Jewish Voice for Peace and SAG-AFTRA, members for ceasefire, were trying to call attention to the ongoing violence in Gaza as Ramadan gets underway. The Department of Justice has opened a criminal investigation into Boeing regarding the door panel that ripped off a Boeing 737 MAX midair in January. The company says it cannot find documents about work done in the factory when the door plug was removed and reinstalled. The federal probe into the door blowout could also provide the DOJ with details on whether Boeing complied with a settlement following the two deadly Boeing 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019. Last Monday, an engine on the Boeing 737-900 burst into flames during a flight from Houston to Fort Myers, Florida. No injuries were reported and the crew made a safe emergency landing. And on Thursday, a tire fell off a Boeing plane heading to Japan from San Francisco. The tire fell off on some cars and a fence in a parking lot. The flight was diverted to LAX where it made a safe landing. Well, parents of hundreds of children kidnapped from a Nigerian school are waiting desperately for news about their whereabouts. Nearly 300 students were abducted from their school last Thursday by armed motorcycle gangs in Kaduna State near the West African nation ca nation's capital. Local residents say the children were surrounded and then marched into a forest just as they were heading to classes. Officials say one man was shot to death trying to save the students. The state governor told local media at least 28 of the children managed to escape their captors. No group has claimed responsibility for the mass abductions. The U.S. military removes non-essential staff from the United States Embassy in Haiti. The action was taken as the country descends further into gang violence. The U.S. has also ramped up security at its mission in the Caribbean nation's capital, Port-au-Prince. Last week, gangs staged attacks at the airport, police stations, and prisons. They're pushing for the removal of Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry. What began as a three-day state of emergency has been extended for a month. All right, coming up on the second half of the newscast, if you're waking up a bit more groggy than usual, you aren't alone. The CDC says it takes a week to get back to normal after losing an hour of sleep. We'll hear about daylight savings time and that full weather forecast coming up on Good Morning Maine. The hot, crispy filet of fish with soft steamed buns, tender, flaky fish, melty cheese and tangy tartar sauce you either love it or you haven't tried it yet now at mcdonald's order a crispy delicious filet of fish a tender juicy mccrispy or spicy mccrispy two for only six dollars there was no salt or sand. And because of that, I slipped and fell. When snow or ice isn't removed, you need a powerful law firm to go after every dollar you may deserve. I needed to protect my rights. Cases like this require resources and experience. Over 25,000 victories for injured Mainers and more than $500 million collected for Maine families. I never thought I'd get that much. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Maine lawyers working for Maine people. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving, located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount.
Main traditions you gotta do. Catch a sunrise from atop Cadillac Mountain. Dig into baked beans at a community supper. And visit the Eastern Maine Sportsman Show. Make plans now for the 83rd Eastern Maine Sportsman Show at the University of Maine in Orono, March 15th to 17th. Come see all kinds of exhibitors and programs from archery to fly tying to hunting to fishing. Everything you need to enjoy Maine and the outdoors is at the Eastern Maine Sportsman Show, March 15th through 17th at UMaine Orono. Make it your Maine tradition. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Monday, March 11th, 2024. It's also National Napping Day. Oh, my gosh, I'll take it. I love a good nap. I think everybody needs it. Yeah. You're not alone if you feel a little jet lagged with the arrival of daylight savings time. National Napping Day is the perfect day to help you recuperate from the spring forward. Napping is scientifically proven to be better for you than coffee or energy drinks. This holiday was created in 1999 by a Boston University professor and his wife who wanted to raise awareness about the importance of getting enough sleep. And I told you this morning, I think going forward, I'm going to try to keep my schedule fairly clear on mo just Mondays in general, yeah. other than work, because oftentimes I need a nap on yeah. Mondays. I usually don't schedule anything Mondays for the same reason, yeah. you know, just getting back into the, the swing of things. And today's different for you, though, Today's different. I got a busy day ahead today, yeah. but Ugh. we'll deal with it. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, moving on now, on this day in history, back in 1930, President Howard Taft became the first U.S. president to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Hmm. In 1942, General Douglas MacArthur left the Philippines ahead of Japanese forces and made his famous speech saying, I shall return, a promise that he kept more than two and a half years later. In 1961, Barbie's counterpart Ken was first introduced. He's been around ever since that time. I think they've broken up though, right? Recently, right? Is that the deal? I think Are so. Are they just friends now or something? Right. It was yeah. it was a handful of decades that they were dating. Yeah. I think about 60. Well, I hope they're both doing well now. <laughs> All right. In 1969, Levi Strauss started to sell bell-bottom jeans, and in 1986, the NFL started using the instant replay rule uh, with video to analyze the plays that had just happened. Hmm. Didn't have instant replay before that. Yeah, it's a bit different. Also in 1986, Popsicle announced its plan to end the traditional twin stick frozen treat for a one stick model. Hmm. I didn't know that. I like the old tool stick. You yeah. could break them apart and give one to a friend, and then you oh, can have one. Oh, that's the deal yeah. with now it. Now they're just like one thing on a yeah. stick. Yeah, I don't know. They're cool either way, I think. Yeah, they're all good. <laughs> yeah. In 1988, a torrential rainstorm hit the East Coast and turned into a major blizzard. It became the most famous snowstorm in U.S. history and caused more than 4,000, or, oh, excuse me, that's a big difference, 400 deaths. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was crazy. Okay. Brought things to a standstill. My, my age is showing there. <laughs> in 1997, Queen Elizabeth knighted Paul McCartney from the Beatles. In 2011, a massive earthquake caused a tsunami off Japan's coast, killing nearly 20,000 people and severely damaging the Fukushima nuclear power plant. And in 2020, the World Health Organization confirmed that the spread of COVID-19 had reached the pandemic stage. Just a few of the many things that happened on this date over the years. Yep. Today's birthdays include singer Lisa Loeb, who turns 56 years old today. Actor Terrence Howard turns 55. You've seen him in a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. And actor and stunt performer Johnny Knoxville turns 53 years old today. Surprised that he is still alive. Yeah, right. After all the things he did. Plenty of um, Plenty of concussions yeah. over the years. I saw a funny <laughs> picture of him next to Jamie Lee Curtis this morning, too. They look remarkably alike. Is it the hair? I think it's the hair and the glasses the hair and helps. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, there was an article about it. That's they were poking funny. fun at it. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving right along. It is good weather for a nap today, and I think I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm not a napper, but today I may be. Perfect snooze day. Here's yep. Devin with your forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Monday, your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's artist trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, let's get into things this morning. Advisories are posted because of the wind, mainly, though. Wind advisories up until around 2 a.m. as we head towards your Tuesday for the counties highlighted there. And along the coast, also expiring at 2 p.m. No, we have gale warnings that are posted along 
the coast. Meanwhile, though, we do have some precipitation rotating around right now, too. We're in a little bit of a break for the time being, but a few rain and snow showers will be expected again throughout the daytime period as this area low pressure continues to rotate off towards the east. So here it is right about in here. We're kind of in the middle of this dry slot right about in here where some spots are seeing some rain and snow this morning and other areas will see a little bit as we head towards the afternoon hours as well. So we'll be watching for some more of this to develop during the afternoon period. Later on tonight, we'll start to lose it a bit, but tomorrow, though, a few flurries cannot be ruled out, at least in the eastern parts of the state. But the wind, though, we're going to notice this. Some sustained winds getting up to around 20 miles per hour at times with gusts even up to 40 miles per hour, and this will also continue into the day on Tuesday. We'll have to watch out for that. So for today, a few rain and snow showers possible. Dry hours as well with highs in the low 40s and northwest wind getting up to about 40 miles per hour. By tonight, here we go. Mostly cloudy, a few snow showers possible. Lows in the upper 20s. The northwest wind st still gusting up to around 40 miles per hour. Already that early forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period will be mostly cloudy with a few rain and snow showers possible. Temperatures in the 40s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. All right, thank you, Devin. Well, if your body and mind haven't adjusted to the time change yet, you're not alone as millions of Americans are coming to terms with the second full day of daylight savings time. Most Americans, with the exception of folks in Arizona and Hawaii, turned their clocks ahead by one hour yesterday. And because the CDC says it can take a week for our bodies to get used to losing an hour of sleep, it's normal for many folks to start the Monday after the time change a little groggier than usual. But it's not just the United States. Roughly 70 countries, about 40% of the rest of the world, participate in daylight savings time. And for the United States, it wasn't until the Uniform Time Act of 1966 that resulted in an official start and end date to daylight savings time and ruled the concept needed to be implemented statewide or not at all. And of course, the legislature's heard several bills over the years uh, by people wanting to get rid of daylight savings time once and for all. Yep. And uh, seems to be picking up some more support, but so far, none of those have made it past. I know, seems so like we talk about it every time. Yeah. It's also a good time to change the batteries in your smoke detectors, I've heard. Good advice. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right, still to come here this morning, Ryan Sudal will have the latest with sports. We'll also be hearing about a Bangor Marathon coming up. Yes, sir. It's, right. a, it's new, one of its kind in Bangor, at least. All, right. all the details coming up. You're stepping inside from a romp in the snow with the kids. Time to take the chill off with a cup of hot chocolate and a push of a button on a Fujitsu heat pump from Valley Home Services. Skip the worry of heating bills and call or visit valleymain.com today to start saving. My father worked at the mill for over 30 years. He was exposed to a great community and excelled at his job, but he was also exposed to asbestos. The air quality inside the mill was always his biggest complaint. He had no idea how deadly some of the products and materials were. When he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew to call Joe Bornstein's office to get my dad the help he needs and the justice he deserves. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Lewis Black, Goodbye Yeller Brick Road, the final tour. When I was in elementary school, then I was like nine. And the teacher said, in case of a nuclear attack, get under your desk. And I said, why would I do that? And she said, because you'll burn faster. Lewis Black, live on stage. Collins Center for the Arts, March 24th. Get tickets now at waterfrontconcerts.com. The new Efficiency Main heat pump rebates are here, and they're huge, based on income saved from four dollars to $11,100. And when combined with the new tax credits, the savings are bigger than ever, and Valley gives you your rebate instantly. Call Valley Home Services now for your new Fujitsu heat pump. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, depend on the knowledge and experience of Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner since 1953. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start out with high school basketball for one of the final times this year. Saturday at Husson's Newman Gymnasium were the McDonald Senior All-Star Games. A chance for the brightest senior basketball stars in the state to go out in style. Take a look. 
it just makes everyone feel so special and like our hard work has paid off. Every first Saturday after states, the best senior high school basketball players in Maine get to show out one final time. Everyone here is a high elite player and uh, just to be nominated, is, it's a blessing. The McDonald's Senior All-Star Games bring nearly 100 hoopers from up and down the state to Husson each year for a day full of fun plus reflection on their stellar careers. Oh my word, it means everything. I mean, I'm so honored. Um, I'm grateful for everybody that has helped me get, get me here to where I am today. It's awesome to be playing against the best players in the state. There were four North versus South games throughout the day Saturday, each of them breaking the typical all-star game mold. In sum, these kids were trying. People were trying to prove themselves and show what they can do against the best players, and I think that's what really made the game a lot better. Everyone wants to win because a lot of people here, this is their last game ever, I and mean, if they're not playing in college, this is it for them. And in between the games, another chance for the players to display their talents with three-point shootouts and a dunk contest just adding to them feeling like stars. This morning I was like, wait, I have to go to a dunk contest in a few hours. I couldn't really believe it. I mean, it was so fun. Even though I didn't do well, it was still great. To, it feels like we're in the NBA. It's just as great a feeling to play for a great cause. The game benefits Ronald McDonald House Charities of Maine, which provides housing to families with kids receiving medical treatment. I think it's a great, great opportunity for these kids, and I feel very, very honored to be a part of something like this that supports them. And when you put everything together, the game, the cause, the hundreds of people that came to watch, it creates a whole lot of Pine Tree State pride. People don't expect the Mainers to be amazing, but like they come to this event, and you know, they can see that we can just play and keep up with all those players at the bigger states and everything. Always love covering that. Now let's go to the ice. The, one of the final high school winter sporting events taking place Saturday down in Portland with the State Ice Hockey Championships. Let's go to the Class A boys title game between top seed Lewiston and the three seed, the hometown Bangor Rams. Devils looking for their first title in, over, in, in four years. Rams their first ever in their first ever state game appearance. First period, Lewiston up 1-0 on the attack again here, but this time Rams goalie Cody McHugh coming up with a huge stop. Second period, Lewiston on the move again. It's Isaac Lullaberti following the play and alertly banging home the rebound. 2-0 Blue Devils. That's the first leg of his hat trick on the night. Third period, still 2-0. The Rams throwing everything, including the kitchen sink at Gabe Palmerlow, but he picks up the save of the night with the one hand. Incredible. Later on, Lewiston captain Cody Dion steals the puck, makes a, ph a phenomenal move, goes backhand for the goal. It's 4-0 Blue Devils, and Lewiston goes on to win 5-0 over Bangor for their 24th state title in program history. Our seniors, they worked hard for this all year. Cody Dion works his butt off, Ethan Blue, Dylan Blue, and you know, we have struggled in the last three years, but we're a better team now, and we take it home, it's great. It feels good to get, it, get out of that drought and Let's get this state championship. Okay, back to basketball we go. Maine Black Bear basketball, to be exact. Six-seed Maine men's basketball looking to pull the upset in the America East Tournament quarterfinals Saturday against the three-seed Bryant. Maine looking for their first tournament win since 2005. First half, Maine's Kellen Tynes, the pump fake, kicks to Peter Filipovich on the right wing from deep. He buries the triple. Later, Maine's Adam Cisse. Can't get the defensive board, but Dan Rivera rips it away and a one-handed slam on his head. Bulldogs up 11 at the break. Second half, Maine starting hot. Filipovich to Deshante Wright McLeish for the corner three. Seven nothing run to begin the half, but the Bulldogs pulling away. Under two minutes left, Sharif Gross Bullock on the baseline out to Rafael Pinzon from way outside for his sixth three of the game. 35 in all for him. Bryant ends the Black Bears season 84 to 58. Eight. Finally, back to hockey. The Boston Bruins facing off against the Pittsburgh Penguins at the Garden Saturday afternoon, looking for their first back-to-back -back regular season, for, looking for their first back-to-back -back regular season wins since late January. Let's start things in the second period. Jake DeBrusque brings it from behind the net, sends it out to David Pasternak, who snipes the one-timer. That's his 40th goal of the year, and the Bruins strike first. Later, Bruins on the power play. Mason Laurie to Morgan Geeky. He finds Pavel Zaka right in front of the net, and the tap-in goal is good. It's two to nothing. About 90 seconds left in the second now. Charlie Coyle gets Brad Marchand charging on, and a sweet backhand to put Boston up three to nothing. To the third period now, it's three to one. Marchand with it again. Feeds it across to Jake DeBrusque, and he scores to make it four to one, Boston. Boston goes on to win this one, five to one. Okay, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break.
Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow. <sighs> yeah. Woo! I love it. Woo! Whoa. Oh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> what do we see? Winners. I love you. Right now, you could get affordable 4.75% financing for 60 months on a fun-to-drive Corolla sedan, which could save you up to $1,600. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. The best value for your money is always at the Furniture Gallery. Strike gold on value and comfort with recliners starting at $298 and power recliners starting at $398. Feel like a lucky charm with deals on this reclining sofa for $598 or on this sofa chaise also $598. Find unbeatable savings at the Furniture Gallery on top brands like Serta, Restonic, Parker House, Ashley, Flex Steel, and more. Markdown Madness is happening now, so hurry in and save big. The Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and North Windham. Welcome back, everyone. We're very excited to have a couple of guests here to tell us about a new event that's coming to Bangor pretty soon, and a lot of people are getting excited about it. We will soon be having our first Bangor Marathon and a Half, I think they're calling it. Yep. And we have Laura and Gavin joining us this morning to tell us all about it. Um, this thing's going to take place in June. First of all, thanks for being here this morning. You're welcome. This is going to take place in June, and yep. this is going to be big for the city. This is. This is. Maine has a really rich running history. I mean, we have, we have a main running hall of fame. We have, you know, um, Bob Booker. We have uh, Joan uh, Benoit, Benoit Samuelson, Samuelson yeah. you know, Robin Emery. So there's so much rich history and Bangor has not had a major race in a long time. So we want to bring back not only a marathon to Bangor that's going to be Boston certified, it's USATF sanctioned, but also something that we, where this city can shine. It's in a renaissance. It needs a marathon. And it takes a lot of people, a lot of organizations to do that. Who's putting this on? Yeah, I know you've got some good sponsors now, too. Yes, we do. Um, our, uh, David and I, my husband, we have a company called Lifestyle Sports Global, mm -hmm. and we're organizing it. And we have our title sponsor here today, which is Bangor Savings Bank. And Gavin has something to tell about that. Why is Bangor Savings Bank getting involved on in all this? Well, thanks for asking. Uh, Bangor Savings Bank likes to partner with organizations that can really help raise the economy and create a more vibrant community. Mm -hmm. And uh, throwing a marathon like this and a half marathon is going to attract people to the community and we're really excited to partner with this uh, event. They've so. seen that up in Millinocket. They created their yes. marathon there and now it's turned into this huge thing every year. Yep. Yes, yeah. Yep. Yep. Hopefully we'll do that here too. Well, we will, yeah. we will. And we're looking for community involvement. There's many ways you can be a sponsor but we also need volunteers to make the mm -hmm. course safe. And that's being at locations where traffic and runners may be. Sure. There's also an opportunity for car dealerships to come on and be mobile support vehicles. Mm -hmm. They'd have water Gatorade and cheerleaders in there to cheer those runners on and make sure everybody's safe on the course. It does take a lot of people, a lot of moving parts in this kind of thing. We, we don't have a lot of time today, but if people are interested, yes. if they want to learn more or, or take part, where do they go? So you can go to our website, Lifestyle Sports Global, the, or on Facebook, you can go to the Great Bangor Marathon, and that's our, we, you can get our contact information there, and we will be posting things out there like prize money. It's coming up. Big Pri announcement Prize money, week. too. Yes. That's not a bad yes. thing. Yeah, it's okay. great. Okay. Do you have a Facebook page or anything like that? We do. It's called okay. the Great Bangor Marathon in Half. Okay. Yep. All right. And then our website is lifestylesportsglobal.com. Okay. Well, we will keep in touch with you guys over the weeks leading up to this thing. It's on, what, June, June 23rd. 23rd. So mark your calendars for that. Uh, we'll have to have you back. you have another thing you want to say? I do. I want to say we will see you all at the starting line. Uh, there you go. <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining us this morning. We'll Thank see you, you soon. Uh, let's send it back over to Devin for a look at that forecast. Thank you. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All righty, this morning, here's what we're looking at here. A wind advisory is posted in some areas here where you see that it's highlighted until about 2 a.m. as we head towards the Tuesday because of gusty winds that will be expected. Even the areas not under any advisories or under are going to be dealing with some of these winds coming up as well. 
well. Gale warnings also posted until 2 p.m. on Tuesday along the coast because of active surf that we will be dealing with and will continue to deal with as well. You can see 7 to 12 foot wave fights already being observed this morning though with even higher surf farther down to the south with the green colors are being noticed. So again, it's going to be very active out there at least for the next little while with this area low pressure passing through. We're in a little bit of a dry stretch right now. We had a few rain and snow showers last night. Maybe a few flurries are being noted in a few spots this morning. But we will be watching for a few more rain and snow showers that will be possible coming up soon with this area low pressure that will be tracking off towards the north and east. But once we get this through though, we will calm down for a bit because we notice what's going on across a good part of the country. A whole lot of nothing right now. So things will start to calm down as we do move forward in time. But we do have more precipitation chances later on this week to keep an eye on. So future cast moving forward though, a few rain and snow showers cannot be ruled out across the region today. Later on tonight, we'll start to lose that in coverage. And then tomorrow, for the most part, we're dry, except for the eastern parts of the state. A few flurries cannot be ruled out from the system before we're all finished up, though. But by the time we head towards Tuesday night, things will begin to improve. There's some clouds left over, but still a little breezy nonetheless. And we do not have to worry about much in a way of snowfall accumulations. A few localized areas can see a little bit of snow, but otherwise, so not looking too bad there. As for the rainfall, though, again, maybe a little bit, though, maybe up to a quarter of an inch in the eastern parts of the state with lesser opportunities further off towards the west when it comes to the rainfall units. As for the gusty winds, that's also the big story. Those some gusty winds today reaching up to around 40 miles per hour. That continues in it tonight and sticking around as we head towards the daytime tomorrow as well. Our average high temperature of 38 degrees. We'll do lower 40s today, middle 40s Tuesday, lower 50s Wednesday, upper 40s Thursday. We're back in the low 50s Friday and 40s return again Saturday and also in your Sunday. For today, here we go. Lower 40s, a few rain and snow showers possible. Windy out there with a northwest wind gusty up to around 40 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, mostly cloudy. A few leftover snow showers could stick around with lows in the upper 20s with a northwest wind gusty up to around 40 miles per hour. And for the most part, we're dry tomorrow.